With the inclusion of the new Pokemon from the Alola region, there are now just over 800 Pokemon in total, which is actually a crazy number if you think about it. But with there being so many new Pokemon, some are definitely going to be harder to obtain than others. I mean, if every Pokemon was easy to get, what would be the challenge in completing the Pokedex? So today, we will look at some of the harder Pokemon to get and count down the top 5 hardest Pokemon to obtain in Sun and Moon. If you enjoy the video, remember to leave a like and to subscribe for more Pokemon Sun and Moon content. And with that being said, let's get right into number 5. In the number 5 spot, we have Salazzle. Salazzle is one of the newly included Pokemon, and I actually think it's really cool. It has a really cool new ability called Corrosion that lets it poison Steel and Poison type Pokemon. But even with that being the case, it is unfortunately kind of tricky to get your hands on. The thing about Salazzle is that it has a 100% female gender ratio, meaning that only female Salandit can evolve. This normally wouldn't be too much of an issue, but considering the chance of a Salandit being female is only 12.5%, it makes this process a little tricky. You find yourself hopelessly running around in the wild or using the SOS method just to get a female Salandit to appear. Some players are luckier than others and find their female Salandits pretty easily, but if you're one of the more unlucky Pokemon players, the process of getting Salazzle can be pretty difficult. In the number 4 spot we have Minior, but to be more specific, getting the Minior color that you want. Now, this spot on the list can be seen as a bit of a reach I know, but if you're like me or many other players, I care what color my Minior is. And it's the dark blue one. I, I, I like the dark blue one. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, let me explain. Minior is a very unique new Pokemon. It has a new ability called Shields Down that causes Minior to break out of its shell when it gets under half HP. And when Minior breaks out of its shell, its core can be one of seven different colors. So every time you encounter this Pokemon, you have a 1 in 7 shot of getting the color you want. But unfortunately, when you encounter Minior, it's in its shell form. So in order to see what color the core is, you have to get that Minior down to half of its HP so its ability will activate. This process isn't necessarily difficult, but it's more so tedious and depending on your luck, it could take quite some time before you get that Minior color of your choice. In the number 3 spot, we have Toxapex. It's important to know that you unfortunately cannot find Toxapex in the wild, so if you want this Pokemon on your team, you will have to catch a wild Marini and level it up to level 38. Seems simple, right? Well, the leveling part is simple, but actually encountering a Marini is definitely not an easy task. The way of encountering Marini is actually rather peculiar because you actually can't directly encounter it in the wild. Instead, you have to encounter a Wild Corsola, which only has a 20% encounter rate in a bubbling fishing spot at Melee Melee Sea. And once you've finally found your Corsola, you have to count on that Corsola to call for help and pray to Arceus that the Corsola calls down a Marini. And the chances of this happening is only 20%. This process of simply getting Marini can be such a struggle. For me, it only took about 30 minutes, but some others have struggled a lot more. And once you've finally got your hands on that Marini, all you have to do is level it up to 38 and it will evolve into one of my favorite Pokemon of the Alola region, Toxapex. In the number 2 spot we have a Pokemon that you work to obtain as soon as you meet Dexio and Sinnoh in Heia Heia City. And this Pokemon is Perfect Zygarde. After you beat either Dexio or Sinnoh in a battle, you are given the Zygarde Cube, and from there your mission is to gather 5 Zygarde cores and 95 Zygarde cells that are scattered all around the Alola region. As you can imagine, getting every single core and cell is definitely not an easy task. This task is even more difficult when you almost have all the Zygarde cells, and you have to roam the region for the last couple that you need. Once you get all of your Zygarde cores and cubes, all you have to do now is head to Route 16 on Ula Ula Island, head to the lab, use the machine, and boom, you have your perfect Zygarde. Fortunately, the task to get this Pokemon is definitely worth it, because Zygarde Perfect is arguably one of the most powerful Pokemon ever. And last but not least, 
The hardest Pokemon to obtain in Pokemon Sun and Moon is a Salamence on Route 3. Early in Pokemon Sun and Moon, on Route 3, in the field of grass south of the bridge, you have a 1% chance of encountering a Bagon. So right off the bat, depending on your luck, it can take you a long time to simply encounter the Bagon. But once you've finally encountered your Bagon, the Bagon actually has a 1% chance of calling on a Salamence to help it out. Yeah, you heard me right. You can find a wild Salamence in Pokemon Sun and Moon on Route 3. But you also heard me right when I said it's a 1% chance. Long story short, the chances of encountering a Bagon in the first place and then having it call down a Salamence is about 1 in 10,000. There are definitely easier ways of obtaining a Salamence in Pokemon Sun and Moon, but if your objective is to obtain it on Route 3, it is definitely going to be difficult. And that's going to do it for the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like rating and to subscribe for more Pokemon Sun and Moon content. Peace out guys.